there was a genuine feeling among us uh, members as well as those who saw Imran that uh, he is more sort of a guy who has been fitted into making numbers rather than actually contributing anything. On my first show I had problems with uh, certain teammates. Uh, firstly because they expected that I was an 18 year old and I should uh, do things which I suppose an 18 year old is supposed to do. But I, I, I mean when someone told me make me a cup of tea, you know for me uh, it was unthinkable. I couldn't believe that someone was ordering me to make tea so I would react to that and I said get lost. was a fascinating place for me. I was so mesmerized by whatever I saw. I mean, this is bearing in mind I'd never been out of Pakistan, hardly even been out of Lahore. Uh, so for me, uh, and you know, I was, I had so much curiosity in me. I mean, it was like exploring everything and even the shops were, uh, you know, one was fascinated by them. There was so much to see. I mean, I remember I just, I couldn't rest, I mean, it was a question of going to bed. I felt it was wasting my time. I had to explore and see what it was like. It was a fascinating experience. Oxford was a game the perfect place to do both, play cricket and study. Uh, there I'm very fortunate. I could have gone to a university where there was no cricket. And I don't know, maybe I would not have been able to, uh, to develop my cricketing career. Or I, I could have stayed back in Pakistan in one of maybe in government college and played cricket and not been able to study. And in my second year at Oxford when I became the captain, it was the only time in my cricketing career I captained the team except Pakistan. My first impression of Imran, my first time to watch there, was that um, he was obviously a boy with a lot of talent, but there was obviously a lot of work to do and a lot of development to do with his cricket. Um, especially his bowling, he was sort of ball wide of the crease and a big sort of in-swing baller, so he had a lot of work to do with that. But I think in those days, I remember him ran probably more as a batsman than he, than he was as a bowler. There it is. A good hand for Edmund Khan. And making the one into two there. So Edmund going to 51, exhilarating performance from the Pakistani Test cricketer. A lot of cricketers uh, simply um, walk into the dressing room, play their cricket and go home and there's no sort of uh, desire to sort of expand one's horizons. But uh, I thought that Imran was too special in so much as he had a view on, on more than just cricket and all sorts of aspects of life and certainly at Suffolk where we've had chaps in the past like Tiger Fatori and Dexter and, and, and exciting characters like that, it was good to have Imran with us as well. I think that the first two years or three years of county cricket can be extremely useful for anyone. I mean, anyone from outside England who wants to develop his game, there you get the perfect cricket education. But, after the two or three years, I actually think that it starts doing you damage. Because it, it's just not possible to maintain your enthusiasm for the game playing seven days a week. It's just not possible. I mean, if, you're, if it becomes a job, if cricket becomes a job, then what suffers is your enthusiasm. And I feel that enthusiasm is the most important thing for the game because that's what gives you the competitiveness. For instance, in Australia, they don't play as much cricket, but whatever cricket they play, it is played with so much enthusiasm and competitiveness that in just 
one third or one fourth of the, uh, the cricket which is played in Australia compared to England in one season, they produce better players. Training for me uh, in the beginning was something that I had to do. I mean, I always, when I was at Aitchison, I was used to playing sport every day because it was compulsory sports in Aitchison. I mean, I, but uh, apart from the fact that it was compulsory, I loved sport. I would play in Aitchison and then I would come back and play in Zaman Park until it was dark. And then at times I would come back home and play some sort of sport indoors. My greatest regret was not having brothers. In the middle of the afternoon, in the middle of summer in Pakistan, it, de it is very hot and nobody was willing to come out of their homes. So he'd come to my younger sister and myself and say, could you bowl to me? Because he was doing his batting practice. It's not that he played with us. We never got a chance to bat. We were only supposed to stand there for one hour or two hours bowling to him. There were times when I first started jogging in, in Baris, you know, people would stop and look. People would, you know, they'd say things like, are you mad? Who's this mad man running and all that sort of thing. But it was that training that helped me in my bowling. It was in 1976 for the first time I realized that I could become a genuine fast bowler. Until then, Worcester used to discourage me from bowling fast. They always insisted <coughs> that I should bowl line and length. And they felt that I had more potential as a medium pacer. I don't think he honestly knew himself quite what potential he had. And in his probably last season with Worcester, was the season that he was just starting to believe that he could bowl far and above medium pace. The problem was that I, my temperament was that of a fast bowler. I could not take getting trash. Okay. Whenever a batsman hit me, you know, a certain sort of anger used to rise within me, a desire to avenge the, the insult. And it was from that reason uh, the pace would come. Mahindra Ramanath now being carried on a stretcher. 